30 seconds, Phil and I would like to express our gratitude to all of you for being here on this very warm day when you could be uh, sweating it out in front of the TV with the Bengals and the Rams. Thank you. Really happy to see you all. Well, I consider this the Super Bowl of poetry <laughs> you with you and Phil, Marsha and Phil, yeah, we're going to have a wonderful time. I'm so glad that you said you do it. I forgot it was Super Bowl Sunday. I mean, you know, I mean, how am I supposed to remember? <laughs> but we're having it anyway, so this is it. And after, after, after Phil and Marsha's reading, everyone will be unmuted, so you can ask them questions, or or you know, give some. Re reaction to them if you'd like. And before we go into the open mic, we'll do that. So I think I've talked enough. It's 4.03 and we have, um, we've introduced Phil and Marsha. I, I, what can I say about them? Except for I think this is the Super Bowl of, of poetry. <laughs> they've been in Ventura for a long time. They've won awards, they publish books. And, um, and they're so dedicated to nourishing other poets. And that is such a beautiful, impressive thing for me to be in there, in there, in the crowd of people who are fluttering around them. So here we go, Marsha and Phil. All right, I'll be starting and then we'll be interspersing poems. And my first poem is from a, um, is from a prompt suggested by the eminent Santa Barbara poet, Barry Spax, who suggested that we all write something fresh about a bird. And uh, because romantic poets always wrote about birds. And I, it occurred to me, I could write about Phil. So this is called Something Fresh. This is my chance to untangle the riddle. He's a bramble, an enigma, a dew-eyed ramble, mouth full of quips, both the bird and the bush, brother and briar, a metaphoric frolic, an off kilter wallop, able to pound out, scratch out, peck out. He's no tabula rasa. He's written up, written off into thousands of sunsets, black and white and red all over. He's the noisiest quiet you'll ever want to know. My big yes, my full court press, chari, a skin flint with lexicon, but rash on syntax. No warrior, yet nature built him compact. The better to swing a battle axe. He told me that on our second date. A stray molecule yearning to burn in the bonds of delight. He's my snake bit baby, my history of the blues, my personal fuse box, my litmus test, my witness, a stroll in a dog park. No saint, but yeah, the guy is something fresh about a bird. <laughs> okay, uh, picnic and ice. First date, I think, out into the wilderness trail, followed picnic lunch basket, me in shorts, always. Wall of rock narrowed, cave of ice, we lunch. Here's two. Thermocline, we were uh, walking in the uh, canyon. Canyon walk, wind calm, past cold warm air, surrounds me, we gaze, she smiles. This one's called Holding Hands. Walking the beach, arranging life chaos adrift, like otters, we hold hands. Okay, this poem is called uh, Nude Descending a Staircase. Only, and it's based on the, um, the Marcel Duchamp uh, painting uh, that uh, was rejected by the Paris Art Institute in the 20s. 
new descending a staircase, except it's a hallway and no descent involved, no loss of elevation. Your warm palate, your bright palate swimming toward me. The hanging committee rejected Marcel Duchamp's painting on the grounds that a nude never descends the stairs, a nude reclines. And you too would have been rejected by Cubis. Naked, you're rounded as a nautilus pink as the lining of a conch, your sex withdrawn into its sheath. In Duchamp's painting, the nude is a melange of light and dark, a being more peaked as he approaches the edges, the in-betweens. And you are peaked too in the words meaning of wounded as you approach your own shadow. But this morning, coming down the hallway, turning into our bedroom, all the shapes, organic, sea cucumber, brittle star, nothing cubist at all. Yes, today you're free, a natural, a curved and rosy nude stepping down the hallway. And I avert my eyes, my hands, two blind men, and you're suddenly an elephant. Very like a wall, says one hand. Very like a rope, says the other. No, a hard melon, a bag of kiwis, a smooth stone with the sun inside. Thank you. River. Fording the river, struggle for balance, I'm stuck. You help me through. Confused. My tweet heart gesture confused. Bright wave poetry. You bigger than breath. Vital reach me. Comfort. Purposeful in motion. She has my jacket. It's hers now. It comforts me. Okay, this next poem is called Invisibility Cloak. And it's uh, uh, about the squid that live in the very, very, very dark part of the ocean and, um, and still need to hide. So it's about people who need to hide and how, how they might find each other. Invisibility Cloak. I've been trying to plumb the deep. I've been trying to disappear. Call me purple. Call desire a tangled skein. Say it lives in every tentacle. Do you care much for the lonely alone in the sea? Glass squid dive a thousand meters, light down on the edge of light. The idea is simple. We all need chaos or a fellow shade, the same nebulous shape, which is to say, I'd like to slide under your cape. You with your leaky fiber <laughs> optics, you with your smidge of sun. I want to be the violet that melts into your night. Thank you. Tea ceremony, grab morning paper. We start the day together, side you, me, side by side. Eight, Milky Way, no moon, her touch my shoulder. We creep through the cabin, June Lake, no moon, stunning. Nine, oh, flowers and flowers. Leafy on my shoulder, walk through flowers and flowers. You touch my arm. Wow. Um, this is a poem about, um, this is a poem about Phil's uh, snoring. I have two poems about that, but I'm only reading one of them. It's called, What You Are To Me Sleeping. A form of transport a haunting, a flight path crossed by insistent owls, lonely to electric, 
your body a constant next to me. Once I thought I was a normal high school girl meant to be heir to an interstellar kingdom. Now, here I am with you, a human air machine, you with your prodigal throat. They say music is a line made of vanishing. I say a lake where we drift in a boat night after night. Your song elegiac, my hush elegiac, you nocturne, you sound surge, ocean me, crash me, raise me at moonrise, keep me in this place I call safe in the world. Thanks. Hand in hand, night chilled, together we walk, shooting star eaten by earth out where land takes the asphalt back. Matillaha Creek, dreamscape of you and I wander past cell phones wrapped, hot wind some water holy. Again, emergency room, my body tries to kill me, you hold my hand. Okay, so this next poem that I'm going to read about after all is called A Field of Energy Knits You to Earth. And it's based on a book I read about. Uh, it's called Finding the Mother Tree by Suzanne Simard, who wrote about uh, her scientific research about, um, you know, the web of relationships uh, between the fungals beneath the ground and the trees in the forest in British Columbia. A Field of Energy knits you to earth. One explanation could be I've gone fungal over the years. My filaments, a silver script round your hold fast. And both of us up for the deal, your sugar for vital minerals in return. Do you believe that's the reason I protect you the way I do? you would be wrong. Silky mycelium is also a language for silent rootstock. When a fruiting chanterelle knocks on the door of the earth, the door opens. When a tree falls in a faraway forest, your ears prick up. You know what it's like to be sawed through. You know what an ax is. You hear the quiet creaking. We all live in the gracious shadow of one mother tree or another. Just as a mushroom loves night moisture and morning mist, so too a mushroom loves mystery. That's how I love you. Campfire. I watch shadows, leafy, fire, marshmallows. You sit next to me. Glasses. Her eyes, head tilted, that space right above the glasses, eyes focused on me. Bats. About sundown, watch bats circle dart through trees. I see you smile, darkness. Okay, this poem, this is I like my two poem warning. Um, it's called Sometimes Awake at Night. Sometimes awake at night, I know with certainty you'll be the first to leave. Wonder if I'll Ever forget that nimbus round your form, that russet glint, the gold of low light trembling as the wind trembles the shadows in the garden mornings. All the same problems still there, fluttering most strongly at the outer edge, but solid those shadows at their center, 
the deepest place where collapse drags us in gravity so dense no light or wind can enter we are hidden then from each other inside one of those places a dog laps up beer at christmas time everyone laughs because it's not funny inside another a 12 year old with flat eyes locker key dangling around her neck this girl frozen sometimes her name is nothing can be done about it i know the fall the pit the harm no truth can touch not even you and yet you roll toward me light silvery in our moon sight stars quivering their damp chaos their slow whirl and twine me to the curve of your body half awake in the tangle you understand even drowsing the refuge of your arms how is it possible your love breathes me in and out this is not a question i'm just going to read one this time kern river too hot helicopter fly through river coal green gray blue away from light we watch the moon thank you for that and this is um, my, my last poem. It's called Portion. I see we're not so different from blackberry briars crouched beneath the force of wind. How small they make themselves. We must curve our bodies and bend our faces low. Coyote brush is holding on. The broom is reaching down the headland. Waves heave portions of infinity. Here's fennel for opening the throat and blue-eyed grass for endings. Look now, twilight and that cloud overhead streaming west, a kind of helix, laddered and spiraled, life ascending and descending. Someday we'll travel there. Restless light. There is the energy of you that flies around the room with a beauty, a confusion, a clarity, a mystery. Of course, I don't understand, but am, but am enthralled just the same. This little bit of you that I do get has made me love you. This time with you is unbelievable, a preciousness, a joy. I am always amazed, grateful that you are here with me. That's it. Thank you. That's it, everybody. Yes, thank you, Marsh and Phil. That was just beautiful. Just beautiful. Oh. You know, you talked about in your second to last poem, Marsha talked about the nimbus of you, Phil. And um and how you hold her, even though you don't understand her, but how it comforts her all the same. And then, and then you spoke of her at the end, Phil. It was just beautiful. Thank you too for taking this on. You've, you've given us a, a real gift. I'm so glad that we're recording it, a real gift. Would anyone else like to unmute and, and speak to Phil and Marcia? Before we I'm go just so happy that I did not miss one second of this. Thank um, you. It was so heartfelt, lovely, 
And the setup, I, you need to do more of that. <laughs> the two of you, that's, it's so wonderful. I was doing it the day before Valentine's Day. You guys hit it out of the, out of the park, if we can use a sport metaphor. <laughs> Uh, you know, it really, it really beats even the Valentine. It's a more serious holiday here in California than it is in New York for some reason. I don't know, we're busy. <laughs> but my favorite Valentine's story was two friends who went, who've been married for years, went into a store, looked at cards, showed each other a card, put it back in the rack and said, happy Valentine's Day. Your poetry was better than that. <laughs> Thank you. I wonder it sent me out of the room into love and uh, the beauty. I am just still crying. Thank you. Me too. I just, you guys, it's so beautiful what you guys have. And most of the time I feel like I take it for granted. It's kind of like, with your parents, you know, like, you know, they're a unit and that they love each other, but it doesn't really, then just to hear it, just hear, hear it between you guys. It's so beautiful. Uh, I'm just, I felt really blessed to witness it. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you so much for all your feelings. You're so full of feeling at all times and we really appreciate you. Thank you. I'm so it was amazing, beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, very thankful to be here. I'd say I'm uh, impressed with how much you're able to do with language, how much uh, ability to, like your ability to express. And also, Marsha, I'm very impressed on the, the ability to, to give biology a soul or, or biology a, like, um, there's something that it's missing usually that's like, We'll strip everything down from it and just use these terms to speak about it very coldly. But you kind of give it life, and I, I really appreciate that. Thank you, Juan, and we're always so so happy to see you come, both of us. Yeah, thank you, Juan. Oh, Phil, oh, Marsha, <laughs> I, I I want the book. I really, you know. <laughs> well, you need you need to do this as a chapbook, I guess, Phil and Marsha. <laughs> I second that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yes. You know, I have something to say and that's, I was wondering if just to make it more realistic, we should each put in a poem about how um, we feel when we get really angry at each other. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, you didn't put that one in. <laughs> we did it, we did it. <laughs> you can have books for each other one down, one. down and it opens the other way. You can have one of those poems in there in the back. You know, I think we're all on a journey of healing uh, with the past couple of years we've been through. And this has given me a giant step forward. Beautiful. I'm so glad you opened up, Marcia. You really, you really opened up and shared the love that you have in a way that you didn't have to. I'm just really glad you did. Thank you. I wondered how did you did Phil know you were reading these poems? Yes, we we shared them with each other. I wonder how he felt. He he's in the very end. I I just wondered. Yeah, Phil, where are you? <laughs> I'm right. I'm right here. I'm always worried about measuring up to Marsha because. Oh. So <laughs> That's not what she's talking about, Bill. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh, no, it is in a way because it's all our feelings. Yeah, all our feelings. Well. Yeah, I was. Well, I was. Uh, all of mine. I. I. These are new poems. Mine are all new, except but, for the last one, which I wrote. Which is actually really your simplicity and your capturing of a moment in two sentences just sends me, just. You know, the counterpoint between the two of you is just yeah. so, well, heart, it's heartbreaking in the most beautiful way you know, I can imagine. You know, you know one, one of the things that struck me, I agree with you, Jean, Marcia and Phil, is that 
Um, we all know and read erotic poetry, but love poetry when written the way you guys do, which allows us to enter your relationship and your world yeah. is as erotic and intimate as, as and it shockingly works just so perfectly. And in my view, better than a lot of other attempts. I, it's just lets you right in. And that's, that's a gift. Thank you. So we're going to sign off right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take him anywhere. I'm in a hurry. <laughs> well, I do agree with what, um, what Eileen said. You know, we need these kinds of poems <laughs> now in these times. So thank you, Eileen, for saying that, because this was a, a really timely reading that you guys gave. So, you know, can't thank you enough. Now, who is this? Uh, so, you know, I, I, a survivor of a long marriage myself, um, and my husband also a writer. Um, and of course, the fights are glorious because we get to make up. Um, but what you both were expressing in your own way was this generosity of spirit the way that your heart grows when you love somebody you know you take in all of them and that that was what was so beautiful and moving the way in which your hearts are growing still thank you beth thank you i um i am planning to resurrect my husband <laughs> <laughs> start all over again I love that Florence is on Zoom with the mask. I love that too. She's extra safe. <laughs> if you promise not to ask why, I will read a poem. Good. Start the open mic, Florence. Okay. <laughs> One second, really quickly. I just want to let you know that uh, the chat box is now available to use. If you can put in there, if you would like to read, that would be great. And S. Pearl, I think you've been trying to, to, to add and say something. I'm not sure if your microphone is working, but if you'd like to put it in the chat, we'd be happy to relay it as well. I somehow cannot. Okay. Not working. It is, but. Uh, if other people are talking, hers is cutting out. Um, so try, try again, S. Pearl. I think we can hear you. Okay. La, 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 la. Can you hear me now? Got me? Yes? Good. Okay. I just wanted to thank you both um, because we don't get often to hear from mature lovers. And so I really appreciated um, that aspect of your reading and the language and the, the way that you're able to share. And it was very encouraging and inspiring. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would like to read, but I can't get the chat open, Erin. Uh, thank you. Okay, I will put you on the list. And I'm so sorry, Florence, uh, for cutting you off. Would love to hear your poem first. Okay, not a problem. Um, this happened last year on Valentine's Day. I was walking alone, hunting for nothing, humming as I do, when I found an earring, a part missing, the clasp that fastens it to the lobe and the stone shaped like a heart turned out to be a darling shade of blue. I keep it in a drawer with other beginnings, your prophecies waiting for me. Thank you so much, Florence. Um, Anita and then Juan, if you'd like to share yours. I assume I'm the only Anita now. So very often there's two of us, but. There is a second one. Oh, there is a which Anita? Uh, Poulier? Poulier, me. Okay, <laughs> great. Okay, so I knew it was Valentine's Day. So I also pulled out a love poem. And this one is called Variations on a Theme. Although an atheist, I fear that somewhere there's a God that might be offended so I have deleted a poem I wrote about self-love, hubris, always risky. I worked for days on that poem, hoping to stumble on the wisdom to accept the cruelty of aging and deny fear the power to frame the future. 
Our long marriage was my original theme, promises made, vows taken. Then the poem veered off, which is when, sadly, it abused a lovely metaphor of Beethoven repurposing a melody for his variations on a theme by Handel, where something glorious happens, better, richer than the original. The idea seemed clever to love myself the way you have loved me for so many years. But the poem reeked of desperation, the tortured metaphor collapsed, leaving behind the barbed unadorned truth, which is when I grabbed your hand and focused on your gray hair and gravelly voice as you patiently pointed to and identified the constellations in the moonlit sky whose names I can never remember. Thank you so much, Anita. Uh, Juan, if you would like to read, and then Charlotte. Thank you, great job, Anita, beautiful. Uh, so this is uh, about one of my lovers, the spiders. It's called Spider Threads. Squint really hard, and you can almost see the translucent fine lines connecting us. Ancient conduits carrying spiritual charges in the electric highway of the soul. As you swat it, the silk entangles your fingers further and further. They are now extensions of your vein root roads that stretch out playfully twirling. Try to sever the spirit silk again and you'll hear the entangled helical echo, echo that cracks the fabric that holds fragments of existence together but doesn't break. Drop down to your knees and bow before this divinity to receive because if you ask the sacred threads of existence will show you the way back home. Thank you so much, Juan. Uh, Charlotte and then S. Pearl, please. Let's see. Charlotte Ward. Yes, I'm here. It's just took, my cursor didn't behave. No worries. <laughs> I hate that when that happens. Um, this is a love poem uh, about an old home place. It's a memory, the persistence of memory. Youngins always come back to their raisin, Jay Mays, my father said. The matter of syllables moves me to describe a river walk on a fair day or as a cherished illusion. No fantasy, but an unseen pulse, free of pretense and mutable time zones. An ample spring still smoothing Ordovician boulders in East Tennessee. The overflowing spill of hills yields clear water, brimful of melting clouds and quartz pebbles clinking like coins. I follow the course of carved channel as it shallows and slows in the meadow where it begins to define the margins between farms and fields. Inhaling again the blend of hay and trees and vapor stirred by the breeze, I extend each breath on an extra portion of negative ions afloat with misty oxygen. A luxury of ferns and mosses mats the verge with a velvety gray-green panay. Harmonized scenes invoke songs of the season a cappella. Wild compositions unfurl in perfect pitch, effecting silence. Never a false note. Far off and high, a pileated woodpecker knocks at the knothole of an ancient oak. Momentary shadows mirror below water striders skimming the surface. An opening in the woods allows young saplings a clear swath of sun. And at noon, the light glances off facets and foam to glimmer and flash a minnow. 
and a patch of shade, I write a page, then roll my jacket into a pillow and lie back at ease. Idly, I skip a few found stones across the creek. The lightness of an empty pocket and a poetic thought makes the wanderer in me a sage. Where gravity leads, the stream slips through rich bottom land into the broad brown Nola Chucky. After pausing to watch the current gain speed toward the middle, I turn heel in the impressionable mica flaked path and head for the old home place to dream. Thank you so much, Charlotte. And I'm just going in order here, S. Pearl, if you would like to share next and then Jean. Hold on one second. I'm going to mute Charlotte because Zoom is picking up her audio. Okay, go ahead and let's see if we can hear you. I'm going to do two short poems. We can't hear you quite yet. So uh, try leaning up maybe a little bit closer to the mic and, and we'll go, we'll see if that works. I actually have a mic, but every time I put it in, it cuts off. Project. In the first poem, I came across when I was doing some research for the project. And the book is Love Songs of the New Kingdom, translated from the ancient Egyptian. So these are ancient Egyptian poems. And so there is no name of the person. This is called If I Could Just Be the Washerman. If I could just be the washerman doing her laundry for one month, I would be faithful to pick up the bundles, sturdy to beat clean the heavy linens, but gentle to touch those fine spun things lying closest to the body I love. I would rinse with pure water the perfumes that linger still in her tunics and I dry my own flesh with the towels she yesterday held to her face. The touch of her clothes, their textures, her softness in them. Thank God for the body, its youthful vigor. And the other poem is by the filmmaker and uh, artist and poet, Gordon Parks, who did the film, The Learning Tree. And he put, published, I think, three or four books of poetry with his photographs. And it's called Is Love. Stiff from mystic sleep, psychedelic night, they stand there, young woman, young man, warming in hip morning sunlight, gone parts of some square mama's dream, some big daddy's pride, enemy of napalm, Washington and conformity, of flag waving and honor draping, of Brooks Brothers and cautious love, friend of indifference, protest and calamity of flowers, of hair and unsocial things. Child, is this any way to run a young life? You bet it is. Love is, love is, love is, love. Gordon Parks. Thank you so much. And we were able to hear you great during that. So that worked out well. Uh, Jean, I'm so sorry I muted you uh, so we could hear S. Pearl a little bit better. Uh, if you could unmute and, and share, and then Jennifer Kay. Um, okay, this poem is for Anne. I hope she's around. Um, Anne and I have written a volume of poetry together. The whole thing is called Knock Knock. And the first section um, that Anne gave the wonderful title to is um, the first section, the first episode is The Terrible Need for Two. And um, so here it is. Dear Anne, when one of our friends says, I couldn't keep going without someone to rescue, you join me in a laugh of recognition Will we ever forget my hello, I'm Anne moment? How I love that you're from the city and that I'm from the city and you're a desert bloom. That your dog Calvin wears your wisdom look. How I love 
that we're on the good ship lollipop having words. Does it astonish you as it does me? How harmless the world can seem? Thank you, Jean. Uh, Jennifer K. And then uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, double W. Gurley. I, I don't know your first name. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but Jennifer, first, please. Okay. You guys are killing me tonight. Oh, okay. Here is probably here is a love poem to my ex. Uh, to my love on our first anniversary. We are only just beginning to build a home where we will age together. A love, a life where love will blossom into family. We're only just beginning to talk, to know each other's most secret places, to understand that some things can be healed, but others need to be waited out or accepted. We're only just beginning to love and I want to dive deeper. I want to cover myself in you, wrap up in you like a blanket to keep me warm and protected. We are only just beginning to protect this present of a present moment where your hand fits in mine, always a little warmer, where my arm curls around your waist and we just belong. We might have only just begun, but I can see a future measured in generations, can see our grandchildren learning from you how to compose a good curry, learning from me how to construct a good clause. I can see a garden of hope and commitment of making up a thousand times over and crying each other's tears. We have only just begun, but more than anything, I love thee, I love thee, I love thee. Thanks. Thank you so much, Jennifer. <clears throat> uh, this is a Valentine to my wife of 65 years. Uh, when we first got married, I was anxious about sleeping with someone. Uh, and then I began to resent sleep because I wanted to spend all the time with her. Sleeping together. Uh, um, there's one medical term that is the popliteal area, which is the back of the knee joint. Sleeping together. Touching bodies is the easy part of bed where we learn to draw a world on bellies and trace the line of the popliteal crease, which is as intimate as other clefts or appendages. We fill the room with us and cries and accept the gift from arrows and all the gods. Sharing bodies is an easy part of bed, but it is the tyrant sleep that separates. The dream piece police take our arms and whisper, come, be one with us. We are lovers of isolation. Sharing bodies is the easy part of bed. When we wake, I touch you the way I do when you're reading and you turn with a look that says, what? And I say again, I want you to know I'm here still. Touching bodies is the easy part of bed. Mm. 
Mm, thank you so much. Um, Dennis and then Beth. And those are all the folks that I have signed up right now. Um, if you would still like to, uh, please let us know in chat. So Dennis, we'd love to hear from you. This poem uh, was written by an anonymous poet. The title is A Lovely Hand. Last night I held a lovely hand. It was so small and neat. I thought my heart with joy would burst. So wild was every beat. No other hand unto my heart could greater pleasure bring than the one so dear I held last night, four aces and a king. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dennis. <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> All right, Beth, and then uh, G Zwiers, um, uh, after Beth, please. Oh, that was, that was terrific. <laughs> um, this is a sonnet length poem. It's called Late Valentine. It's from my book, Speaking Parts. Late Valentine. Babe, I don't mean to be mean. Our hokey arc, our true tribe, yeah. No me, no you, loners no more, our. But you are not Noel. I am not Hark. You're kale to my lamb. I'm llama to your leek. My bite, your bark. We're like a yurt, leaky, but normal, a home. I bathe in you, you breathe me. Not art, maybe, but rhyme, meter. We are an elaborate labyrinth on the Tiber, a three minute mile, a limerick mini tour, but beauty, only beauty and no night, abnormal. Or out of our mouths, only the truth. No, honey, heartbreak, all heartbreak, all the time. Thank you so much, Beth. All right, uh, a G is weird. Um, your I that yeah, I can only go by the name on your screen. Uh, please, it's Gerald, and I, I'm on my phone, which is that big, so it's hard to change it out. But very nice to meet you, Gerald. Looking forward to hearing from you this afternoon. Well, in honor of um, Valentine's Day and and Phil and Marcia's reading, I wore a shirt covered in hearts. And um, that's a, uh, an image that I've done hundreds, maybe thousands of in different ways. The tall piece behind me is 100, 100 inches tall. It's all, all covered in hearts. And a bunch of little ones with me here. And um, in the city of Ventura, uh, there are two Two of the, the bus shelter murals that are both heart themed that I painted. And I thought I would just do one that's based on just the image of the heart because I think that it is just a beautiful and really pure, simple image. But starting at a common point, two lines, two lives separate and flare apart to go in opposite directions. And after their time alone and exploring the different distant reaches of the universe, they slowly come back together again. You reunite once again at a common point. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Gerald. And I'm going to turn it over to Anne. 
uh, for those are all that uh, volunteered to read your poems, but I personally want to thank uh, Phil and Marcia. It was beautiful. It was powerful. It was profound. Um, and I loved hearing all of the other poems that you all shared this afternoon. So for me personally, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Anne and Pastor Aaron for uh, having us featuring us. And we really love seeing all of our friends here and our new friends. It was a good Super Bowl, right, Phil? Perfect Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we'll be back in, um, what is, we'll be back in three months with another Poetry by the Sea. And before then, Phil has something every week in Ventura. There's stuff going on here too, which Phil is, is kind enough to let you all know about because, um, I send in the notice and he forwards it. So thanks for doing that too, Phil. And um, yeah, I hope to see more of you. Anybody else want to say a parting word to Phil and Marcia? Okay. Thank you so much. That was that was amazing. Couldn't have asked for more. Yes. I'd like to say I think it's a great lead up to the erotic reading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when's that? When is that, Phil? <laughs> You're muted, uh, Phil. March 13th. Are you going to do it online or are you going to be in person now? Well, we still are going to stay online, people. I hope that that means that many people from different areas can come. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm doing that too in many regards, staying online because it just enables, enables, enables more. And then mm -hmm. trying to do a few in person things now and then. But um, yeah, so thank you. Um, again, you know, you gave us a wonderful gift, Marcia. Okay. Thank so thank you. Yeah. All righty, you guys. We'll we'll see you next time. Thank Love you. Me. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Phil.